Welcome to Corvette Today, the podcast that talks about everything Corvette, with your host Steve Garrett, MC and DJ at one of the largest Corvette weekends in the country, Corvette Fun Fest, president of the Corvette Club of Kansas City, Missouri, and radio disc jockey at the number one radio station in Kansas City for over 40 years. Here's Steve Garrett. Thanks for listening to Corvette Today, the podcast that talks about everything Corvette. Brought to you by MidAmerica Motorworks. Pursue your passion at mamotorworks.com. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. I appreciate you tuning in. You can listen to Corvette Today on all podcast platforms. You can also listen on your smart device. Just say Alexa or Hey Google, play the podcast called Corvette Today, and you're connected. Also, visit the Corvette Today website. It's corvettetodaypodcast.com. And while you're there, make sure you visit the Corvette Today merchandise store. You can also sign up for Corvette Today emails, notifications, and updates at corvettetoday.ck.page. And don't forget, join the Corvette Today Facebook group. We have over 3,400 members, and I'd love to have you as a member as well. I'm also excited to tell you about the new YouTube channel for Corvette Today. See your favorite Corvette Today podcasts now on YouTube. First, I'd like to thank our flagship sponsors of Corvette Today, Aerolari Wheels, a true forged wheel with over 20 unique design styles to choose from for your C8 and wide-body versions of the C7, C6, and C5 Corvette. It's an absurd value starting at only $19.88 for a set of four fully forged wheels. And use the promo code CT100 for Corvette Today 100 and get $100 off your purchase. Visit aerolari.com. That's A-E-R-O-L-A-R-R-I.com. And use the promo code CT100 for your $100 discount. Also, Corvette Fever Magazine. Corvette Fever has been relaunched with an online and printed version. The online version has incredible interactivity with hidden photos and information, and the printed version is nothing like you've ever seen before, huge and glossy. Get your free online version at CorvetteFeverMag.com. You can also sign up for the printed version there as well. Corvette Fever Magazine, come along for the ride. Also, MidEngineCorvetteForum.com, the forum that focuses on the new mid-engine C8 Corvette. Meet a lot of fellow Corvette enthusiasts like yourself at midenginecorvetteforum.com. Also, a shout out to canadiancorvetteforum.com, welcoming Corvette owners from around the world. It's time to get the latest Corvette news and headlines with my buddy Keith Cornett from CorvetteBlogger.com. As you know, Keith is a regular guest on Corvette today. He's here twice per month, about every other week, to keep you up to date on what's happening with America's favorite sports car. Keith, good to have you back. How's everything going for 2022? Everything's been going really good so far, Steve. How about yourself? Everything is great. I'm looking forward to a good year, buddy. And we're starting off with this podcast. We have tons and tons of news. Why don't we get right into it and talk about Corvette production at the Bowling Green Assembly Plant? Sounds great, Steve. Happy to do that. Things have really been rolling since we've had the tornado issues. We've had a couple snow days. We had the winter holiday break. And now it's back to work, and they are really cranking out some Corvettes. This week, we'll cross over the 13,000 number in the VIN count. Wow. We just go on and on now. We go like 12 weeks without any break. But the real big news with the Corvette production, I think, happened maybe a couple weeks back now that we're looking at the numbers. And I tell you, we love sharing good news like this. But we recently saw that the Corvette plant broke its single-day production record. Normally, they can do 184 over the two shifts. That's always like the goal. We saw a count where they came in on a Tuesday and did 197 cars. Wow. And then the next day, they came back and did 195 cars. It dipped during that week. But then on the Saturday, they came in on a rare Saturday and cranked out another 95 cars. Normally, a weekly total, if they hit all their marks, a weekly total of full production is listed as 920 cars. Okay. They did 1,036 cars over that entire week. So really cranking them out. And you know, that 920 figure, they really don't meet that that often. I think in November, we averaged like 857, 860 cars per week. Mm -hmm. So, you know, you come in and you crank out that 1036 and that's a huge number. One of the things that we know about their worker contract, the UAW contract, is that they have six days of overtime scheduled for like weekends that they can fit in and use like whenever they need. And so with those production dips in late December, it looks like that's what they're doing. They're dipping in, they're working extra, working overtime to make up those lost orders, it sounds like. 
Yeah, this is all really good news. Like I said, they're going to go Monday through Friday, at least, all the way through April 15th. And that's the Easter weekend break. And then they'll break there. And then we come back in May and we got some big news coming in May. So if we can keep the supply chain humming and everything's working well and the Omicron starts to die off a little bit, we could really see a great output of cars in this first quarter. Boy, that's great news, Keith. That's so good to hear. But the one thing that I was really disappointed to hear is that the auto workers rejected the latest contract offer and they've authorized the strike. So what's the backstory on all that? Yeah, I know this freaked a lot of people out and I saw the headline myself and just felt my stomach drop a little bit. But I don't think this is as serious as when you hear strike authorized, that's essentially the UAW is posturing. They're saying that we've got strike authorization from our membership. However, they have a bunch of things that they have to jump through before they would actually have to be able to strike. Okay. So it's just not like they're going next Friday and they're walking out. This is a dispute that goes back a couple of years now. And uh, a lot of it has to do with like outsourcing tasks to non-union members. There's four outstanding issues in this work agreement that they're looking for. The big one is they want UAW members to do contracted jobs, such as like the 3D printing, maintenance work, putting stripes on the cars. Currently, these are done by outside companies for Chevrolet and the, the Corvette plant. They want UAW members there. The other one is they want local 2164, that's the UAW local shop there in Bowling Green. They want skilled trade workers in the Performance Build Center, and that's where the GM makes the performance motors. They'll make the LT6 there. They make the LT4 there. They want those skilled trade workers in there as well. The other ones are just really promises. They want to promise to build future Corvettes, including electric versions in Bowling Green. Oh. I think that's probably a no-brainer. That one's an easy one to sign off on, I think. And then the other one is just to commit to a higher pay rate for certain jobs that require a lot more skills or additional knowledge. I don't think that one's too far out of the array for them to look at. Those four points are what they're looking at. And again, I think just the big one is they want to see more UAW members involved in some of the different projects there at the plant. Hopefully this will get done. I really don't think that it'll ever get to the strike. Jason Watson is the shop chairman there. And he said, he quoted as saying, our membership has approved a strike authorization, but there's a process that must go through the UAW Region 8 and the National Union before it ever gets there. Again, don't fret this. I think they're going to get this done. Well, that's good news. I was really worried about that when I saw it, and I know you would have the backstory on that, so it's good to hear. Also, Chevrolet has unfortunately pulled the engine appearance package, which is the high wing out of C8 orders. Are they running out of high wings? Yes, they are. So there's two issues here. The high wings are on a 100% national constraint right now. Talking to one of my dealer rep friends, he said he can't even order it from like the parts division. Oh boy. This is the carbon flash wing. I'm not so sure actually about the painted wings, if it's the white one, the blue one, or the red one are still in stock or not. This is carbon flash. So this is one is just, they're out of stock on this one. So instead of holding up orders, they're just taking them away. We caught this news by a guy on the Corvette forum who said that he was presented with options. So, hey, you can't get that high wing. Wing. So he had a non-Z51 car, which then wouldn't just default to the Z51 wings. He was actually given the opportunity to change that if he wanted to go with like the low profile spoiler or no spoiler. It sounds like if your dealer contacts you with time, it might be able to switch something out there. The other issue is the engine appearance package. This is the carbon fiber rails on each side of the engine, as well as the light kit, the LED light kit that goes inside. What dealers were told there is that the manufacturer of those side rails is getting out of the carbon fiber business as of January 31st this year. So they're going to have to find another supplier to redo that. That's a real bummer because this engine appearance package, it looks great. And then it's got the light in there. But by stripping that out, you're taking that light away from people where they could actually have still the light and then do something different with the rails, go aftermarket or something like that. I really wish Chevrolet would actually just include the damn light in the engine compartment as a default thing and then let people do what they want to do there. But hey, that's just my own take on that, Steve. I've got you, Keith. (laughs) No real timetable on when these are coming back. So keep an eye out. You hear from your dealers, great. But as soon as we have any news, we'll post it like that the high wing is back. Perfect. That sounds good. Good. Also, we did get some good news from Chevrolet, and the dealers got good news as well. 2023 production starts on May 9th. Does that include Z06s? Well, that's the big key question right now. We're just told 2023 start 
on May 9th. The Z06 will be a 2023, so that's the question. We've seen previously when they've done new models or introduced new models that there is a ramp up of that to full production. So they might come in and actually start on day one, but only do a few. And then the next day, do a few more. And the next day, do a few more until they feel comfortable. We really don't know much about the rollout and how that's going to work. But we did get these confirmation dates. We'll just run through them. We'll start with the 2022 info and then go into the 2023. Okay. So 2022 Corvette production, that model year build out. So we're going to end on May 6th. That's a Friday. Final consensus, March 1st. So there'll be one last order cycle in March. And then the 2023 models will kick off on May 9th, which is a Monday. We'll see a order consensus. The first allocations will be again in March. And then the first order cycle where orders are matched up with dealer allocations happens March 31st. Pretty exciting stuff. Dealers will actually be able to start doing pre-orders on March 24th. Again, we're looking at maybe just a little over 70 days until that happens. So pretty crazy that we're getting this close. Finally, the last thing is the order guide is set for March 21st. We're really just waiting on pricing now. And if I had a guess, Steve, my bet would be look around the Barrett-Jackson auction on January 29th. And that's when the Z06, the first retail Z06 will be sold. And I'm hoping that with any kind of press release or news announcement about that, that we might get some additional pricing information because that would be a great opportunity there. So maybe look after that auction and look for the first week in February. Maybe we'll get some pricing done. That sounds logical. I think that's probably spot on, Keith. That's for sure. And finally, I loved your headline on this one, Keith. Shots fired. GM warns dealers about selling over MSRP for upcoming Z06s. Talk about that. So this was a letter that was sent to dealers from North American President Steve Carlisle. And it wasn't just market adjustments and it wasn't just about the Z06. So GM has a number of in-demand vehicles coming up. They include the Silverado EV. They've got a GMC Hummer coming out. You've got the Cadillac Lyric. So there's a couple other vehicles and, of course, the Z06 as well. What's been happening is just the supply and demand has been off the chain for automakers across the board, including General Motors dealers. So we're seeing games being played with allocations. We're seeing games being played with people placing orders. It's unfortunate. So this letter, I think, is just to kind of highlight that. What he actually says in here is that these dealers risk having their vehicle allocations redirected to other dealers who aren't being bad actors in the new car sales process. But it really doesn't stop dealers from saying, I could charge 5000 I could charge 25000 over, I could charge 50000 over. It doesn't really stop them because in the dealer sales agreement, the franchise agreement that they have with their different dealers, the dealer set the price. There's a manufacturer's suggested retail price, and then the dealer set the price. So even though this was a really short strongly worded letter. It also goes on to dealers who are dealing with brokers, selling cars out the door that way, exporting cars immediately overseas. That's a huge no-no. Dealers can actually get blacklisted for doing that if they're caught selling cars to brokers and then those brokers take them overseas. I think more of the stringent and the strongly worded portion of this letter deals with that more than the market adjustments now that we've really had a chance to take a look at this. But it could cause dealers to give a little pause. And again, we have to see how this average daily supply method of allocations will work with the Z06 because here's the other flip side with the allocations. The Z06 allocations are just going to be part of allocations total, not dealers are going to get a Stingray allocation and a Z06 allocation. So this is a little bit different than previous where they were separated. But what we've heard from dealers is they might say, so you might get 10 cars this week or this month for this order cycle, but you can only order, say, three of those could be Z06s. So they'll be probably given guidance by Chevrolet on terms of how many Z06s they can do in their allocations. But again, we're just kind of waiting, Steve. This is all new to us in terms of how they're doing all this. And we've never seen demand like this. I mean, we've seen demand in first years, but nothing crazy as the 2023 Z06. So we're just going to have to really watch and see. Hopefully dealers will toe the line and get in line and take care of their customers the way they should be. It's going to be a whole new ball game in 2023. That's for sure, buddy. Yep. Let's take our first break, Keith. And in section number two, we'll talk about Corvette racing and Corvette rumors coming up on Corvette. Corvette today. Vetfinders.com is the internet's original Corvette classified ads website with classified 
classified ads starting at just $25. And every ad runs until your Corvette is sold. If you're in the market for a Corvette, VetFinders.com has over 500 Corvettes for sale from all around the USA and Canada and covering all eight generations. Visit VetFinders.com, the Internet's destination for buying and selling Corvettes. That's V-E-T-T-E Finders.com. MidAmerican Motorworks has been the industry leader and aftermarket supplier and manufacturer of Corvette replacement parts and accessories since 1974. We have what you need for all years and generations of Corvette. Whether you need a door panel or a seat cover for your C1 Corvette or the latest shirt, jacket, hat, or lifestyle accessory to complement your new C8, you can get it at MidAmerican Motorworks. So if you're restoring, repairing, replacing, or simply researching your Corvette, MidAmerican Motorworks is the place to go. Visit our website at mamotorworks.com and shop Corvettes by generation or specific year. Or call us Monday through Saturday toll-free at 800-500-1500 and talk to one of our Corvette experts to help you get the right part or accessory. Pursue your passion with MidAmerica Motorworks. And now, back to Corvette Today with your host and my husband, Steve Garrett. Hey, thanks for listening to Corvette Today, the podcast that talks about everything Corvette, brought to you by MidAmerica Motorworks. Pursue your passion at mamotorworks.com. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. With me every other week is Keith Cornett from CorvetteBlogger.com. We keep you up to date and current on everything Corvette. In this second section, we're going to talk about Corvette racing and also Corvette rumors. Keith, IMSA released a mega entry list for Rolex, and we've got 13 GTD Pro Series entries as well. we got a big race coming up. This is exciting. It's race week. We've got the Rolex 24 Daytona happening on Saturday. It's always an exciting time, but wow, you know, we went from racing just a single loan Porsche, maybe a couple BMWs in the endurance races. Now there's 13 cars in this grid. 11 of those will be competitors. We have the number four car with us for this race. So really exciting stuff. Of course, over the weekend was the roar of the 24, the big tune up, and then the qualifying race. We are actually recording this podcast before that. So we don't have those results. But really exciting stuff leading into it. And I can't imagine 13 cars. I'm trying to remember the last time I saw a field that big for Corvette racing. Most likely it was one of the Le Mans starts. I know that we had 9 and 10, 11 cars maybe at some of the big endurance races. In previous times, we had like the Fords racing. So really exciting stuff. So here's what we've got. With these manufacturers, we've got three Porsche 911s. We've got two BMW M4s. Of course, the two Corvettes. There's two Mercedes AMGs. And then we have an Aston Martin Vantage GT3. We've got a Ferrari 488, the Lamborghini Huracan, and a Lexus RCF. So really strong competition. These are pro drivers or a mix of drivers. Neat thing that we've got going with us is we've got some guys that are just really hungry for competition. So I think that looks really well for us. The downside is that these manufacturers already have GT3 cars, and we're playing with a GTLM car that's basically been downgraded. Our cars have the anti-lock braking system. We tested that last year at Belle Isle. There's going to be a revised wing profile. There's some other changes here and there. And then the, probably one of the bigger changes is that now all the cars in that class are going to use a single specification Michelin tire, which is different than previous years. Lee Willard has always had a custom tire made specifically for Corvette racing. So now we're just using a single spec tire. So yeah, it really levels the playing field. It's going to be a really exciting race. We're very excited. Of course, this year we'll see see Antonio Garcia, Jordan Taylor, and Nikki Katzberg in the number three car. They won last year's Rolex 24 as a part of a one-two finish for Corvette Racing. And then the number four car, Tommy Milner and Nick Tandy will be contesting the FIA World Endurance Championship this season, but they're here for the Rolex. And they are joined by new teammate Marco Sorensen. So really exciting stuff. Race takes place Saturday afternoon. Hopefully everybody will be watching and cheering on Corvette Racing because this is like waking up and it's a brand new world. Hopefully, this will be a lot more fun to watch, a lot fun for the fans. It's also fun for the team. You know, we want them to do well, but we also want them out there. This now comes down to figuring out strategies and when do you pit and when do you fuel and just really exciting stuff. I can't wait for this season to start. I'm looking forward to it, too. It's a whole new world for Corvette racing. Also, Keith, our buddy, friend of the show, Jeremy Wellborn, found out that the 70th anniversary details were leaked on the visualizer on Chevrolet.com, but now they're gone. 
Yeah, you know, we've seen a couple really impressive leaks by the members of the Chevrolet team. And this is one hand not talking to another. They have all kinds of departments there. If you remember, going back to the LA Auto Show, Corvette enthusiasts came across 14 painted C8 models in a display case instead of the regular 12. And it just so happened that the extra two, one of them was a white pearlescent color. The other one was a carbon flash metallic. Obvious speculation was that we were going to see those as the 70th anniversary edition colors. And that's what Jeremy found. He found a white pearl metallic tricoat with satin matrix gray stripes or carbon flash metallic with satin black stripes so you're going to have a white car and a black car and then you're going to have like a silver or a black stripe on it really elegant the white car kind of looks like the 60th anniversary in 2013 right but then it really adds some neat stuff here they've got the 70th anniversary badging it's also on the cross flags emblems well we'll see 70th anniversary on that 70th anniversary wheel caps edge red brake calipers, carbon flash wheels, and the carbon flash mirror and spoilers. The wheels on the car will be the spider wheels. The interior is really cool. White ceramic is what they're calling it. White ceramic GT2 seats with red stitching. It's almost like the strike yellow and sky cool gray in the inserts are the white. You have black on the outside and you have some white trim on the outside. Really looks very nice, very elegant. You know, we haven't had white seats since I think the 88 anniversary edition. We're picking up some cues from some previous anniversary editions, putting them here. Some of the accessories will also include an edge red engine cover, rear bumper protector, and then there's going to be a custom luggage set with the 70th anniversary logo as well. We have no idea uh, pricing. Like I said, this was a leak. We went to the visualizer this morning. It's down. They're probably not real happy. We're talking about this stuff, but that's what happens when stuff gets leaked. We're very sorry that their big plans might have been spoiled here. But they had to get this information out anyway, because if I was a guy that was buying a Z06 and I was in love with the 70th anniversary package, I would definitely want to make my feelings known to the dealer that I definitely want one of those packages. We're going to wait, find out more. I know the order guide again will come out in March and pricing will have some info there. So just stay tuned. The leaks are going to be coming between now and the order period. It's coming. It's coming. That's for sure, buddy. Also, we had two Z06s on the way to Michigan and they had some carbon flash wheels on them that looked really, really nice. Yeah, so there were two cars again going up to Warren Tech Center. We believe that these are CTF cars or they're using these as third-party evaluator tester models. Both of the cars had the five-spoke carbon fiber wheels, but one of them had the wheels in carbon flash metallic, so not the visible carbon. One was in visible carbon, one was in carbon flash metallic. First time we've seen those wheels on the car. They tested the cars, the old prototypes with all the camouflage on them, and when they were showing those wheels, they actually took a spray paint can and had to manually paint the visible carbon fiber over to hide it wow but now we are seeing carbon flash so again just more and more options are ending up on the ctf cars from the factory it's just a real good indicator that they are really close to getting ready for full production in may so we're hoping that that's the case and we're ready to go absolutely right buddy let's take our final break and in segment number three we'll talk about the lighter side of corvette here on corvette today american hydrocarbon your one-stop shop for custom interior exterior and engine bay items for your C4 through C8 Corvette. We can help you create a custom look for your Corvette with carbon fiber or 10 different color patterns and styles. We've served customers in over 28 countries all around the world. Whether it's a custom-made engine cover for your new C8 mid-engine Corvette or custom-made C4 interior upgrades, American Hydrocarbon can help you transform your Corvette into a best-in-class show car. Our products have been featured in VET and Corvette magazines, so give us a call. 813-476-5638. That's 813-476-5638. And now we're proud to announce that we can produce and distribute officially licensed GM products with a C8 Corvette. That includes the front splitter, the side skirts, engine appearance panels, and engine fluid caps. See everything on our new updated website, AmericanHydrocarbon.com. Yogi Berra once said, if you don't know where you're going, you'll probably end up there. At True Wealth & Company, we take that to heart. See, at True Wealth & Company, we believe your retirement lifestyle travels through two doors. Door number one, the blue door, gives you more options, financial freedom. Your money outlives you. Every happiness you wish for in life is through the blue door. Door number two, the red door, is where you outlive your money. You rely on family, friends, or even the state to take care of you. At True Wealth & Company, we're not just financial planners. The best way to walk through the blue door is to have a written plan. Make a work-optional lifestyle a reality with our proprietary True Life Map formula. Look towards your future with anticipation, not apprehension. 
Having a rock-solid fiduciary partner like True Wealth & Company is essential to effective financial planning. There's no winging it. There's nothing left to chance. Look, we don't want you to become another Yogi Berraism. Give us a call today at 913-653-TRUE. Visit us online at retirewithtrue.com. Start your financial independence and work optional lifestyle today. 913-653-8783. Visit us online at retirewithtrue.com. Investment advice offered through True Wealth & Company, LLC, a registered investment advisor in the state of Kansas. This is the Corvette Today podcast with Steve Garrett. Thanks for tuning in to Corvette Today, the podcast that talks about everything Corvette. Brought to you by MidAmerica Motorworks. Pursue your passion at mamotorworks.com. I'm your host, Steve Garrett. With me every other week is Keith Cornett from CorvetteBlogger.com. We keep you current and up to date on what's happening with America's sports car. Keith, in this third and final segment, we're going to talk about the lighter side, the etc. side of Corvette. First off, though, we got the top 100 dealer list from 2021, didn't we? Yeah, this is always big news, and we're very happy to always be able to get our hands on this info. You know, it's a great way to find out who's selling the most Corvettes in your region. Our list is actually, you can sort it by state, so you can really zoom in and find your area. Here's the thing, too. The Corvette is bringing in so many new customers to Chevrolet, first-time buyers to Chevrolet, so they might not know where to go or who's selling what or who the top 10 dealers are. It's just a great way to really show new buyers who's selling in their areas. But here's the key. Only 39% of the total Corvette sales in 2021 were sold by these 100 dealers. That total was like 12,900 out of the 33,000 total. Wow. So by far, the majority of Corvette sales are coming from dealers outside the top 100. I mean, those definitely add up. There's just under 3,000 dealers in the country now. Take that for a grain of salt. But here we got these top dealers. Most of them are selling, especially the top 10 dealers. I believe most of those are selling customer ordered Corvettes at MSRP. As you work your way down the list, obviously, we don't know. You have to call and find out what their lists are. And that's what you're really doing is you're dialing for dollars. If you're serious about still looking for a Z06, this list is a great area to start with. Obviously, look outside the list as well. 60% of cars were sold outside this list. But again, great resource. It's all based on the individual dealership sales. There's some dealers that have multiple locations like Hendrick and Bonham. We don't add those up. These numbers come straight from Chevrolet that we present them as such. So take a look at it if you're looking for a new Corvette, and hopefully this will serve as a guide for you. Also, Keith, Chevrolet's offering the first retail C8 Z06 for charitable auction at Barrett Jackson in Scottsdale. Rick Hendrick is going to be there, I bet. I bet. Yep. This is going to be a fun one to watch. We saw the first 2020 Corvette Stingray. Mr. Hendrick bought that car for $3 million. There's going to be some pretty interested parties in this, but how high it goes, I have no idea. It's going to be fun to watch. What we're also going to see here, like I mentioned, hopefully we'll get a press release with any kind of pricing or information following the sale. It's a perfect opportunity. You know, we might not get full pricing, but we might get a starts at number. And I think a lot of people would settle for that right away. If I got a starts at number for a Z07 or a starts at number for a convertible, that would be fantastic. Absolutely. Also, this is huge, huge news, Keith. The number three Cunningham Corvette owned by Lance Miller was recently sold. Give us the story about that. Yeah, this is just one of these neat stories. I was fortunate enough to work with all the parties involved in this sale. The story of the Cunningham Corvette is pretty special. We've talked about it quite a bit. Briggs Cunningham, a gentleman racer, took three 1960 Corvettes over to France for the 1960 Le Mans. It was the first time that Corvettes had raced there. With him, he had Zora Arcus Duntoff and Chevrolet serving as an unofficial supporting role. And it was the number three car that actually won its class and finished eighth overall. Those cars came home. They were actually converted back to street and then resold. And they were lost. No one knew where they were. So Chip Miller really loved this car growing up. I think the Le Mans that it won happened during his teenage years, and he was smitten ever since. He sought and found and bought the car, had it restored, obviously, to the livery, but then he passed away. His goal was never met to take the car back to Le Mans for its 50th anniversary in 2010. That's where his son Lance kind of picked up the charge. He and John Fitch, the original driver of the number three car, went to France. Really cool story. It's all documented in the Quest documentary, if you get a chance to see that. Now this car has been back in the United States. But I think that just the opportunity came up. It's the Miller family that sold the car. And I think it's just the time was right. 
The person that bought it, Erwin Corey, is just a great guy. He's got a fantastic collection. He's got probably one of the top quality Corvette collections ever assembled. This Cunningham Corvette will just be the centerpiece. It's the holy grail of that collection. It's just going to be right at home there. Erwin shows his cars. He takes cars to Bloomington Gold, Muscle Car, and Corvette Nationals, and some other shows. So you'll definitely be able to see this car at some point. Just keep an eye out for it. A neat story and great people. All the people I talk with here are just fantastic. Corvettes become part of the family. You're saying goodbye. You're not just an owner. You're a caretaker of the car. And that's what Irwin is. Irwin's now the next caretaker of the 1960 Cunningham Corvette. It's in very good hands. Part of the process of owning Corvettes, you buy them, you sell them, you move on. So it looks like the Cunningham Corvette's moving on to a new home. And also, I have to give a big shout out to our friend of the show, Kevin McKay from Corvette Repair. Kevin took the number three car and restored it back to current, and he is working on the number one car. It would be great to see all three Cunningham Corvettes back together at some point, maybe this year even. That would be so cool. Yeah, I don't know where he is on the restoration of the number one car, but the owners of these cars, and now Irwin with the number three, number two car is owned by Bruce Meyer of the Peterson Auto Museum, and the number one car was purchased by Briggs Cunningham's grandson. I believe that it shouldn't be too hard to get these three cars all together once they're all restored and ready to go. That'll be fantastic. Also, this is really cool. The 1970 Corvette that was signed by Paul Newman was reviewed on Antique Roadshow, wasn't it? It's always fun when Corvettes show up on non-traditional shows. The Antique Roadshow is just one of those fun, you know, before Pawn Stars and all these other kinds of crazy stuff came out, you had the Antique Roadshow where people would bring in their treasures and find out, hey, this is really worth something. So this guy has a 1970 Corvette. He met Paul Newman at a charity event and Paul Newman signed his dash. Of course, Paul Newman wasn't just an actor and he's not just a salad dresser maker. He also raced cars and he raced Corvettes as well. So big shout out to there. They took a look at the car. She suggested that the car by itself might be valued upwards of 24000 but because of that Newman signature on it, it might actually go for thirty or 40000 And He actually suggested that he might even look for insurance that it's upwards of 65000 thousand dollars that's the top end price for a paul newman signature on a corvette that he just sat in he didn't drive it he didn't own it but it's still neat to see corvettes on these non-traditional shows and really a neat storyline with paul newman and speaking of celebrities buddy that was so cool by the way alan shepard the astronaut had a 1968 corvette it's also going up for auction at barrett jackson in scottsdale yeah the old connection between the nasa and astronauts is very well known alan shepard one of the first 12 astronauts in the nasa program first to American in outer space and one of the few that actually walked on the moon. They basically got to lease a new Corvette for $1 for the year and they could get him however they wanted. He outfitted his 68 Corvette with an L89 originally, a 427-435 with a four-speed transmission. Of course, he was into doing all kinds of fun stuff with that car and he ended up blowing up that original motor. <laughs> and documentation shows that it was replaced under warranty with a similar motor that's still under the hood of this car. Wow. If you were to look at the interior of this car, you, you see rip seats and you see tears and you might be thinking oh my gosh this car needs to be restored and then you find out that it's got all this documentation with nasa astronaut alan shepard and then you're like don't even touch this car you know leave it alone this is going to go through barrett jackson to be interesting to see how well it does an unrestored 1968 427 i think it's going to go for some big bucks i think so too i would love to have that car that would be so cool yeah very cool also, Chevrolet released a new video called The World about the Z06. If you're a Z06 buyer and you're not on their email list, you can go to Chevrolet.com. At the top, there's a list there that says Upcoming Vehicles. Click on the 2023s and click on the Corvette Z06. And there's a link there that you can actually sign up to get official communications from Chevrolet on the Z06. Yeah, we got an email one day. Here's a new video that they put up. And the videos they put up, you can't find them in YouTube. They're unlisted. So you have to either follow Corvette Blogger, be on one of the forums, or be on the list itself. You can get it right away. This one had to deal with testing in the Nürburgring and the world car aspects of it. Give it a watch if you get a chance. We do have it linked over on Corvette Blogger. That's great. Also, this is really cool. I saw the GM launched an online store for AC Delco and Genuine GM Parts. They didn't have that before, did they? 
No, and normally you'd have to turn to eBay or third-party sellers that might have some of this stuff. The one question we have is I'd love to know how far some of this new old stock goes back, if that's what it is. Is it going to go back to the 60s and 70s? Or are we really looking at more of a modern day aspect of it? Most likely more modern day, but there might be a few treasures in there. So we're anxious to see. We don't really have a link on when it's going to go live yet. We're going to be watching this and checking it out. I'd love to see that. That would be some neat old stuff if it goes really far back, that's for sure. Yes, it does. Also, finally, Keith, let's review the Meekum Kissimmee show. It was a big, big show with a lot of Corvettes. Yeah, this is a huge list. Unofficially, we're showing maybe upwards of 400 cars went through. Meekum gave us some numbers, over $24 million in Corvette sold. We're really relying right now on my Detroit bureau, Steve Burns, who really put together some great points for us here. He says prices were up on just about everything. And the big news for this is the split window coupes. 1963s made up six of the top 15 Corvette sales, and all of them were greater than $300,000. Wow. So, I mean, that's a big number. Now, some of those split windows were former race cars or Z06s, so they're going to command premium prices anyways. But if you're seeing just a regular 63 split windows with even just a regular small block in there, we're seeing prices going up on those as well. What was interesting on this list was there was only four resto mods in the top 15. So you could say, well, are they starting to cool off? Or is this a Meekum versus like what we might see at Barrett-Jackson, which has always done really big money with resto mods. So that's something we're going to be watching. Steve has a couple of WTF prices here. A 2017 Grand Sport with seven miles sold for 187000 Wow. A 2019 ZR1 with 11 miles. 2019 ZR1, we've been seeing big money out of those anyways. This one sold for two ninety seven, <laughs> and then finally, this one will blow your mind. A nineteen eighty four with five thousand miles sold for fifty one thousand dollars. So, again, big money coming out of Mecum. There were some disappointments. We didn't see the nineteen sixty three Golf One former race car. We didn't see that sell. It reached a high bid of two point four million dollars. A nineteen sixty six Pilot L eighty eight racer reached a high bid of one point one million, and then a right hand drive nineteen sixty three Z zero six had a high bid of three hundred thousand. Just tremendous money going through the markets right now and through the these auctions. We have Barrett Jackson next week. Steve always calls that fantasy land money, and it'll be interesting to see if their prices are normal or if we're just going to see another huge increase over the year. Really fun stuff in the market. So yeah, stay tuned and prepare to be amazed, I guess, Steve. Absolutely right, buddy. I am always tuned. Those are fun shows to watch, that's for sure. Aren't they really? So much fun, and they've, they've come so far, and they're just really these big events now. Very excited for Bear Jackson coming up, and we'll do a similar breakdown after that auction as well. Definitely. Well, buddy, thanks for being on Corvette today again, as always. And remember, if you want more in-depth information about any of the stories we've covered in today's podcast, you can always go to CorvetteBlogger.com. Keith, thanks a lot. I'll see you in two weeks. Thank you, Steve, so much. Best regards to everybody out there. Good luck to Corvette Racing this week, and we'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to Corvette Today, and please be sure to tell your family, friends, and other Corvette enthusiasts about the Corvette Today podcast. And also thanks to our flagship sponsors, MidAmerica Motorworks. Pursue your passion at mamotorworks.com. American Hydrocarbon at AmericanHydrocarbon.com, True Wealth and Company at RetireWithTrue.com. Also, Aerolari Wheels, get $100 off your purchase with the promo code CT100 at Aerolari.com. You've been listening to Corvette Today with Steve Garrett. If you'd like to contact Steve with any thoughts on the podcast or ideas for guests on Corvette Today, you can email him at DJ at gmail.com. That's Steve Garrett DJ at gmail.com. Garrett has two R's and two T's. Or connect with Steve on social media on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram using at Steve Garrett DJ. Thanks again for listening to Corvette Today.